my friends! Today I have a very special video for you. First, I want to talk with you about Team Seas. Team C is a project from Mr. Beast. I'm sure you're all aware of who he is. And together with thousand other content creators, we want to get 30 million pounds of trash out of the ocean, rivers and beaches. And for that, we want to raise 30 million dollars. I'm sure almost all of you are aware of the fact that our ocean, rivers and beaches are full of plastic trash. It's estimated that there are 200 million tons of plastic already circulating in marine environments, with an estimated 11 million tons entering the ocean every year. Pollution from bottles, bags, straws and abundant fishing gear is a health crisis for our entire planet. The ocean and the life within it are incredibly important. Aside from the water we drink, the ocean produces half of the air we breathe every day, so it's a no-brainer to keep it clean and healthy, since it's critical to our survival. All donations will be split 50-50 with Ocean Conservancy and the Ocean Cleanup. And every dollar you donate will be raised directly to these two solution-orientated non-profit organizations. If you want more information, like how they are actually going to clean up the ocean, and most importantly, donate a couple of dollars to this awesome campaign, head over to teamseas.org and make your donation now. Every dollar counts. So even if you only have one dollar to spare, that would be awesome. If every one of us just donate one dollar, we would raise together over forty thousand dollar, which is an enormous amount. So again, head over to teamseas.org to make your donation today. Now, since I wanted to make a video fitting to that topic, I decided together with my wife that it's time to make a video about one of our favorite heroes, Kadita. Very fitting because she's a mermaid. You get the hint, right? She's very different from many mages because on the one hand she has the potential to one-shot multiple enemies but is also very mobile unlike most other mages. You need some training with her though and you must be precise to execute her combo successfully. But once you've mastered her, you can become a nightmare for almost all enemy heroes. This is by the way my first hero guide since about four and a half months. So I'm really excited to see how well this kind of video will perform with you guys. Now let's start with the very basics. Her skill. We start with her passive. Every 30 seconds, Kadita receives a blessing from the might of the ocean. You can see that the passive is up by the bubble that is floating around her. Once she receives any damage, the passive gets triggered for 4 seconds and she will regen 65% of her HP she lost in between this 4 seconds. So as an example, if she get hit by multiple skills and receives 2000 damage, she recovers 1300 HP after the 4 seconds. This skill is very useful to let you survive many difficult situations but can be also easily outplayed by the enemies. If they poke you and wait for seconds, your passive is on cooldown. So you gotta be careful about taking any damage while your passive is up. Next is her first skill. With her first skill, she dashes first forward and then backwards again to her starting location, dealing magic damage to the enemy in the way and slowing them down by 30%. The wave can hit an enemy two times and with a full build, you can deal around 1200 to 1400 magic damage twice with this skill. Minus the magic defense of your enemies of course. You can also use the first skill again while you ride the wave and get immediately off it. The wave continues though and the damage stays the same. So you can also use it as a poke skill without putting yourself into a dangerous situation. Unless you need the skill to escape of course. With this skill you can also go through walls which is highly recommended when you try to escape an enemy. She also gains CC immunity and 50% damage reduction as long as she's inside of the wave. The only exception for it are suppression effects like Franco's ult. But even when she's getting suppressed, she continues to travel the wave but can't cast any skills or move of course until the effect is over. That also means that you can use this skill to prevent any CC effects from the enemy. A good example for that would be for example Selena's second skill. When she sends her abyssal arrow towards you, you can simply use your first skill to escape it or even use it towards her to use your other skills on her to kill her. Another very useful way is for example to use it against Johnson. You can stop and roll in when you crash into him using your first skill but not getting stunned because of your CC immunity. Just make sure to get out of there if Johnson passenger wants some of your nuts. Although Kadita is a fish so uh, let's not get into that. Lastly, you can somewhat safely check the bushes with it. Even if an enemy is hiding in the bush, you can simply ride the wave till the end and since you're immune to CC skills, the enemy can just catch you that easily. And even if they start to follow you, you still have your second skill available, with which we will continue now. Kadita summons an ocean wave at the designated area and after 1.5 seconds, the wave surges out of the ground, dealing magic damage and knocks the enemy as in that area into the air for 1.5 seconds. This is an airborne effect, what means it's one of the hard CC abilities. With this, you can for example cancel the ultimates of Chang'e or Gord, which you can't cancel with a simple stun. You can also cast this skill 
while you're using your first skill. By doing so, you first leave the wave and release the ocean wave at the place you stand. The surging time also becomes a lot faster, since it now only takes around 0.7 seconds until the wave surges out of the ground. While the skill itself sounds very simple at first, it can be used in so many different ways. One way is of course to simply knock up the enemies to catch them for your ult, which I will explain you next. But you can also use it to escape for example. When an enemy is trying to catch you, you simply put your second skill in between you two and your enemy has to wait until the skill is done or getting stunned. No matter what happens, you can escape. You can also use it the other way around, cutting off the escape part of your enemies, which can be a good support action in a gank. You don't even need to hit the enemy with a skill, it's enough when they can't move where they want to move. You can also use it to secure objectives and keep the enemies away from it, when you and your allies take down a turret for example. Another way to use the skill is to put it directly under you or an ally, when for example a hero with a locked on skill is charging towards you. Aldog, Jawhead or Fovius for example. Then their charge can horribly backfire at them. And as mentioned before, you can cancel any skill with it, as long as the enemy hero is not becoming immune to CC effects. As you can see, this skill can be used in basically any way you want. There are even more ways, but I don't want to stretch that video too long. So really, use all of the possibilities of the skill that you can think of. Now, let's get to her ultimate. Kadita uses dick... Uh, wait, wrong game. Well, she goes into the ground and summons 6 waves. The first wave that hits the enemy deals 100% damage and any other deals 90% damage. The enemy is also slowed for 1.5 seconds by 25%. While she's in that state, she's invincible, so she can't be hit by any skills etc. After 1.5 seconds Kadita emerges again and the 6 waves return to her, each dealing magic damage again the same way. The first one deals 100% damage and every other 90%. What is important here? If you stand directly on an enemy hero, they will be hit by all 6 waves, what deals a huge amount of damage. But if you slightly miss it, the damage decreases massively. So this skill really requires you to be precisely, in order to be effective. And this is what makes it not so easy to play Kadita. Unlike the bot Laylas here, the enemies are actually moving around. So in order to catch them, you need to stop them from moving. So the combos will come very soon. But first, a very important warning. While Kadita goes under the ground, it can be interrupted by CC effects. The skill is not a cooldown then, but you are pretty exposed and you can be easily killed. So never use the skill mindlessly on the open field against a hero that has any stun abilities or can blink away easily, because like this, you wasted 95% of the time. You can also use the skill to escape difficult situations. Since you are invincible, the enemy can't attack you or stun you and you can escape even from the most difficult situations. And since the cooldown of this item isn't that long, especially when you build items with cooldown reduction, you don't need to be shy to use this ult in this way. While you're on the ground, you also have to decide what you want to do next. Are you following the enemy hero if they are still alive to kill them when your waves return or are you backing off because there are other enemies around who can easily pick you up afterwards. A general tip, if you want to learn a new hero, go into classic mode and really test the limits of a hero. You don't need to play super carefully in classic mode, because if you win or lose, doesn't really matter anyway. Really try to figure out the limits of your hero, so you are aware of what you can do and what you can't do. This is something that you can only really learn from your own experience with a hero, and not from a hero guide or by watching other people play the hero, because you have to make decisions in a split second. And there, you don't really have the time to think, because if you have to think, the situation is already over and you're either dead or missed a golden opportunity. That's why again, Test the limits, but only in classic, where it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Never train a hero in ranking please. Also remember, all of her skills are AoE skills. So in the theory, you could take out the whole enemy team with one combo. In reality, it rarely happens. But picking up 2 or 3 enemies at the same time happens quite often, if you're really good. Now, let's get to our combos. I will always show you a few examples first. The most well known is 1 plus 2 plus old. You close the gap to the enemies with your first, Use your second skill to send them airborne and use your ult to drown them. This works really good against immobile heroes, but catching mobile heroes with a blink skill will be very difficult this way, especially on the open field. When you use it from a bush, you might be successful. Another more promising way to use that combo is when you use it in the chaos of a gank, there the enemy might not even notice that you're coming towards them and you can catch them off guard. Although remember, if you're not able to stun the enemy who can stun you, you might get stunned before you can use your ult and add up a fish food by yourself. You could also use this combo while you hide in the bush. When the enemy is approaching the bush, you simply wait until the enemy is about to enter it. 
Use your first and immediately afterwards your second skill and ult. Your enemy has almost no reaction time like this. And you can catch even the most mobile heroes this way. I wouldn't just use your ult by the way. Because many times you're not dealing enough damage to kill an enemy purely with it. The extra damage from your other skills is necessary most of the time. I would only recommend to do it like this if the enemy is already pretty low. Like in this example. The next combo is 2 plus 1 plus ult. This combo is safer. Since you try to catch the enemy with your second skill before charging into them. You use your second skill and if you are sure that you will hit the enemy you charge towards them with your first and after you hopefully hit the enemy with your second skill you can use your ult on them to kill them. If you misjudged it and the enemy was not hit by your second skill you can simply ride the wave till the end and escape pretty easily with it. And if the enemy is targeting you now just use your ult to escape. In the early game you can also deal a huge amount of damage to squishy enemies by using your 1 plus 2 combo. But I wouldn't do it reckless since with your skills on cooldown you're kinda a sitting duck. So only do it if you are sure that you can survive with your skills on cooldown afterwards. These are pretty much all combos you need for her. Let's talk about her playstyle now. First you should definitely try to use her in the mid lane. With her roaming and ambush abilities she's suited for that role. But in the case that you have a donkey in the team who just picks a second mid laner and doesn't adjust you can also go to the gold or xp lane. She's able to perform alright in both side lanes but I wouldn't advise you to pick her for that lanes. For that you have dozens of better choices. Also since she's almost more of an assassin than a mage I would highly recommend that you play her in that style. If you like camping she's a hero you will love instantly. Camp near the enemy's buff and murder the poor enemy's jungler camp in the mid lane bushes to kill the enemy's mage or camp near the turtle area or the side lane bushes to kill any squishy hero that passes by. With the right build you can basically one shot any non tanky enemy easily as long as you hit your skills. Using her in the 1v1 is one of the best ways to play her. But you can also use her against multiple enemies although you should be careful when doing so. Just head into them mindlessly is a bad idea. You should have the following things in mind. First is the ally tank or your team near to back you up. Second can you sustain the enemy's damage? Is your passive up for example? And third the enemies are all grouped up on one spot? Ok fuck it it's time to get a savage. Just don't try that too often please. As I mentioned before you can use a combos pretty effective in ganks. There are so many things going on that only really good players will notice when you are shooting towards them from the side. So make use of that and don't be the first one to jump into the fight. Preferably you have a tank or another ally at your side who also have the ability to stun multiple enemies. With the right timing you too can destroy the whole enemy team. I used to play Badang as my main when I started to play ML and my wife was playing Kadita. While I trapped the enemies in my wall and stunned them plus dealt a huge amount of damage as well my wife could simply use a combo to kill anything what was left and like this we could easily take out multiple enemies. She's also a very good partner for Johnson. Better than Odette in my opinion. The only other thing you need to have in mind is being very precisely. You really need to hit your combos otherwise you are useless. A Kadita who always hits her combos is a nightmare because you get the feeling that you have no space to breathe. On the other hand a Kadita that misses most of her combos is nothing more than a stinky fish. Last to let it sink in once more play her more as an assassin than a poking mage. Now let's talk about her emblem, build and spells. First the spells. You have multiple options. My favorite is execute since it guarantees you many situations a kill. Often your damage is not quite enough to kill the enemy. But with execute you can finish off many enemies. In my opinion that's the best choice for her. The other very good choice for her would be flicker. While you use your ult you can adjust your position when the enemy blinked away and you're able to still catch that guy. You can also use it to escape of course. It's up to you what you like more. There are also people who use petrify but I'm not a fan of it. You can't use it while you ride your wave so you have to get off it to use it. It gives you a safe stun and it can be useful but as I said I'm personally not a fan of it. These three spells are the most useful ones. You could theoretically also use flame shot or ages but the other three spells are better choices in my opinion. Next let's talk about the emblem. The only emblem you should use on her is the custom mage emblem. As first sub talent you either spend your point in mastery for the cooldown reduction. On the max emblem level you get 10% cooldown reduction this way. Or you spend your points in agility. I personally prefer always to boost my movement speed. But both options are viable. You can also mix both together if you feel like it. As second sub talent you should use observation. On the max level emblem you have 19.5 magic penetration which is especially in the early game a huge damage boost. As talent you should use magic worship since you're definitely able to activate its effect. If your emblem is not on level 30 yet you can also use mystery shop as your talent. That's no problem. Now to our build. 
I will just quickly go through the items. If you want to know how any of these items work exactly, check out the item guides I've made for them. The links are all in the description. As boots, you either use demon shoes, so you're not running out of mana, which he does fast, if you're frequently using his skills, or arcane boots for magic penetration. As first and second core item, you should be a Clock of Destiny and Lightning Junction. Clock of Destiny gives you a lot of magic power and mana, plus a good amount of HP, which makes you able to sustain more. Lightning Junction gives you also magic power and mana, plus some cooldown reduction. The passive effect Resonate lets you also deal some nice additional damage, especially because you can target multiple enemies with it. Next, I like to use Holy Crystal to massively boost your magic power and therefore your damage. As fourth core item, I would use Fleeting Time. Whenever you eliminate an enemy or get an assist, the cooldown of your ult get reduced by 30%, what means you can use it more frequently. It also gives you an additional cooldown reduction of 15%. So now you have a cooldown reduction of at least 30% together with a custom mage emblem. It also gives you more magic power, which is getting boosted even more from the passive of Holy Crystal and some more mana as well. But right now you have enough of it anyway, especially when you build demon shoes. As last item, you have different options. If the enemy has built magic defense items like Athena's shield or radiant armor, you should build Divine Glaive to counter it. You can get up to 55% magic penetration from it. You can always see here how much magic defense the enemy have and if it's useful to build this item. If only the enemy's tank for example with magic defensive items, you can choose between Immortality, Winter Junction and Blood Wings. Immortality gives you an extra life, obviously. So I would choose this item if you want to have a defensive item. But if the effect of this is on cooldown, I would switch it out for Winter Junction. You can even do it while you're reviving, so have it prioritized if you want to do the switcheroo. If you want to go for a more aggressive way, you can build Blood Wings. The huge amount of magic power you receive will boost your damage again pretty high and since you have so much magic power by now, the shield you get from the passive will be enormous. So here you have my recommended build for her. Whew, this guide became much longer than I expected. I hope you enjoyed this guide. Before we end the video, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons Corbear and Garu OP. Now, go and check out the item guides I mentioned, if you're still unsure about how they work. Knowing what your items does gives you such a huge advantage. Trust me. See you over there.